The game of the Retrievers was always this, a handler and a dog working against a standard. Through the years, this game began to evolve in a way that enhanced competition by matching that handler and dog against other such teams. But always, it's been about the series of tests to measure the true ability and find the potential of these competitors, asking for a top performance despite the difficulty and through all the elements. For that top performance, you become a super retriever. The sort of team that is now combined with three other such pairs to make a four-man, four-dog team. A new dynamic emerges, along with a whole new set of strategies. The dedication, focus, and drive of a team times four. The Drake Waterfowl 4x4 four four Team Medley. Welcome to Huntsville, Alabama, the host city for the Drake Waterfowl 4x4 Team Medley Competition. I'm Tommy Sanders, and our special guest today, actually, one of our team competitors from Team Tritronics, it's the well-known J. Paul Jackson. J. Paul, thanks so much for doing double duty today. Man, I'm glad to be here. I'll tell you what, it's nice to be sitting on the other side looking in. <laughs> As we take a look at our rules of the game, this is, again, team competition. Four man, four dog teams, and no more than two the participants on the man side of those teams can be pros. So very, very interesting stuff. And uh, JB, tell us the difference between this and the old individual game. Well, you know, for me as a pro, it's really different because normally most of us guys who run as professionals bring several dogs to the event. But today we're gonna see professionals with just one dog. So you've only got one bite at the apple here. Makes it a whole lot more even playing field for the pros and the amateurs alike because we're seeing what those guys with only one dog, how they experience it. All right, and we're getting a taste of it right now. Some action going on. We have seven teams that have gathered for this competition and three series to complete for each of those teams. Each captain has made the draw and determined the team's running orders. So each team will run four flights throughout the day. And again, the order has been determined. Currently in series one, this is the Hunt Savvy test. Hunt Savvy being a setup uh, just like you're at a duck hunt, right, JP? Exactly. The purpose of this test is to simulate hunting situations and see how a dog will react. A lot of dogs that compete only in field trials, they're really lost when they get out in the real world of hunting. So this puts them a little bit out of their element for the field trial dogs, and it gives the opportunity for the hunting dog to really shine in competition. This is Frank Price. His dog is Rue. They're from Team Country Vet. And JP, we had a quick look at, at our course right there. Des describe it for us. For it's a quad, right? Well, it's a quad, but really it's more like a straight up hunt test triple with a little wipeout bird thrown at the end. You've got three big marks thrown out there that the dog's really focusing on. And then at the end, boom, this little screamer comes across in front of the dog's face. And the purpose of that is to kind of shock the dog and wipe its memory of the first three marks. Looking at the scores so far in the Series 1 competition, as we watch Frank Price and Rue, do you think they're on track to, to be competitive with those? Well, Rue's looking really good here on this first bird. He's just picked it up clean. Be interesting to see what effect that wipeout bird has on his next couple of marks. All right, well, Lyle Steinman is the team captain. Let's hear from him right now, see who he's watching and why. Oh, I'd say there's several handlers in teams. Uh, more importantly, I guess I would look at the handler, okay? Uh, Al Arthur, what, what needs to be said. I mean, uh, in my opinion, one of the three best field trial trainers in the country. Uh, maybe one of the top ten, maybe of all time. I mean, fierce competitor. Okay, it doesn't matter if he's playing checkers or, or what he's playing, cards. Uh, Bobby Wills, Bobby Wills is a fierce competitor, works his tail off. Jay Paul does a great job. I mean, there's several guys that we could go on. There's several amateurs, you know, not just uh, pros. Kay Gentry, you know, uh, I got Frank Price on my team. He's as good as any pro. Well, Frank Price, uh, again, is an amateur, and it's not always easy out here running with the big dogs, as they say, Jay Paul. No, but Frank is doing an excellent job handling here. Unfortunately, Rue being a trial dog, I really think this hunt savvy situation has had him confused. He struggled mightily on the middle bird, split the middle bird in the right hand mark and struggled with it also. And now we see him taking off here on the blind. 
He's got a really good initial line going into this blind, but he's got a lot of ground to make up after really botching those last two marks. Well, now, Rue is eight years old, and of course, unlike a lot of these pro pairings here, the, these two have spent a lot of time, a lot of years together. Is that an advantage, and what kind of advantage is it, especially when we reach the blind? Oh, it's a big advantage. As you can see here, Frank really knows Rue. He wasn't worried about that right-hand shoreline sucking him in like we've seen with some other dogs, and this has been a really nice blind. He's probably about one, maybe two whistles here away. This probably should do it, and this should give him a good score, and it should also help dig him out of the hole that the marks put him in a little bit. Yeah, they were counting on a good blind right there. Really needed it. Nevertheless, you see the score there. He started with 20 possible points and down to six, so a rough run for this team right there. Let's go to David Hamilton at the line with team captain Lyle Steinman. What kind of things are you taking from the first guys that you can apply to yours and the other two teammates? Well, the situation you got right here, you always the first dog you run, first handler runs in something like this, he's our test dog. There wasn't any doubt he's seen the first mark, he's seen the second mark. I was probably fairly certain that he's seen the third mark, and Chris definitely knew he's seen it. Team doing their best to break down what happened in that run right there as we take a look at the scores, you see where that sets them. So they're in third place, but still very early in the Series 1 competition. Much more to come, including Boomer and Steve Riggins from Team Bayer Animal Healthcare. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 Team Medley is powered by Yukonuba. Huntsville Sports Commission, showcasing one of the South's greatest cities. Waterdog E-Clinics, the world's first 24-7, 365 dog training experience. And by Thunder Equipment. Drake Waterfowl 4x4 Team Medley competition. We are back here in Huntsville, Alabama. Cove Park is our location here, and up next, team on the line, Boomer. And Steve Riggins handling from Team Bayer Animal Health, and we'll watch, uh, well, you can tell a lot, uh, Jay Paul, from just watching what happens at the line when these birds come out. Oh, no doubt. I mean, if you look here, you see that Steve's really working this hard, trying to move the gun barrel around, and I'm not sure that Boomer's seen a mark yet. Steve's doing everything he can, but uh, Boomer's looking confused. And the judges are looking for a dog who is marking every one of those three marked birds that come out. No doubt. And Boomer, you could see his head was swinging the whole time. When the cannon went off for the wipeout bird, totally threw him off his game. And here we see he's going after his first mark. And you do not want to see him handling a dog to what should be a marked bird, right? In this case, when you've got a wipeout bird that's fallen 20 feet in front of the dog, no, you definitely want the dog to go out and pick that bird up clean. That's right. The ideal situation is automatic on this first bird, and that is anything but the case right now for Steve Riggins and Boomer. And now they got that one out of the way. So a rough start. Also a rough day earlier for their teammates on Team Bayer Animal Health. Larry Nolan and Delta also struggled with the marks. Delta hunting an area prior to the fall on each one of these marks, and that is not good. Judges looking for clean pickups. They're looking uh, not for handling to the areas where these marked birds are supposed to be. Not looked highly upon and a score there that's not good, actually a score of zero. And the opposite case this morning for other teammates, Clark Kennington and Max. Max marked each and every one of these marks without a hitch, pretty much nailed each mark one after the other. It was like clockwork for this team out there. Team Bayer uh, could not restrain their excitement at that prospect. They needed a good moment there at that point. Max had an excellent run, bringing the total score to 16 points. Good points for Team Bayer. Yeah, it really was a nice run for Clark and Max, and I'm sure that buoys their confidence after watching his teammates struggle. Now here we see Team Country Vet coming back to the line with Richard Mills and Cole. Now, as you can see, the wipeout bird really had a profound effect on Cole as he came off of the platform. And as we watch him struggle here to find this marked retrieve, obviously that's lingering along the way. Well, again, like some other teams, all they had in that was a decent blind retrieve and saved them from a zero. Uh, they get two points total. Now, now here we see Chris Aiken and Banjo, teammates of Richard and Cole. And Banjo, he stayed very steady there through that wipeout bird, came off, picked it up clean, but again, still doing its job. I mean, Banjo obviously has no idea where this last bird is, and Chris is really struggling to have him pick it up. Total faults four for this team of Banjo and Chris Aiken. The veterans there would like to have had more than that. Now back to uh, Steve Riggins 
and Boomer still struggling. Yeah, you can see his teammate Chris Inman there looking very concerned, and he should be looking concerned because Boomer hasn't indicated that he has any idea where a single one of these marks are. As a matter of fact, he's not only handled him to every bird, he's had to handle Boomer to the area of every bird, and that's really looked on poorly by the judges. They want to see the dog indicate that they at least have some idea where the area of fall is, and in the case of Boomer here, just hadn't happened. Steve's had to put him on every bird and in the area. You can see Dana's looking pretty disgusted with the run, too. Dana Giovanello and Linda Noga making the scores there, and obviously they don't have a lot of good marks to put down for the effort of this team so far. Those marked birds certainly have meant trouble for them. Well, you know, Dana and Linda are both excellent judges, and they are definitely for the dog. You can see it on Dana's face. He hates to ever give a dog a zero, but, you know, sometimes you just don't have any choice. I mean, Boomer's been all over the field here. Steve had to put him to the area, as we said before, of every single bird. And as you watch him come in to pick up this last bird here, he still doesn't have any idea. I'll be honest, I'll be very, very surprised if he lets him continue and goes on to pick up the blind as poorly as he's done here on these marks. Well, the judges would go on and, and decide to pick up Steve Riggins and Boomer, so they come away with a fail, a score of zero, too many handles to the areas of those marked birds and just not the best of dog work, not what they're capable of in certain certain terms. Happens to the best of us, right? I'm sure Steve's terribly disappointed here. I mean, they had a lot of faith in this dog. He came out of the Huntsville Classic last fall where he got third place and is qualified for this year's crown championship. So they were really expecting Boomer to be the anchor of the team. To have the anchor come out and put up a zero right off the bat, that's definitely got to knock some wind out of their cells. Well, that's the old story. Boomer has not lost any enthusiasm, but Steve a little bit lacking in that department. Plenty more to come, though. Kay Gentry and his youngster, Bonnie, when we return. You have to be pleased with what you and Max did out there, huh? Very pleased. Very pleased. You did an excellent job. Didn't see two of the four birds, but still picked up three clean and just crushed the blind. So I'm very happy with this performance so far. As a handler, when he doesn't see two of the birds, how do you direct him so that you can make sure that he does go find them? At that time, a lot of handlers would get really excited or upset. It's just best to be calm. That dog feeds off of your energy. So if you're nervous, they're going to be nervous. So if you can calm yourself down and focus on the line that you need that dog to take to that bird and get them to take that right bird, and they'll carry it long enough, you can still get that bird. Clark Kennington of Team Bayer Animal Health and his dog Max, it was uh, certainly their day. Some good points put up by them. 16 points for that team there. And now we're going back to Team Tritronics coming to the line. Cade Gentry and his young dog Bonnie as they get ready to go. We see here earlier action, you, Jay Paul, and uh, also Bobby Wills completed their runs. Tell us how it went for you. You know, we didn't have the run that we wanted here. I mean, Red did a good job. He saw the birds, but basically he hunted Hell's Half Acre during this. and racked up a whole bunch of penalty points, wound up with six. Bobby came to the line and, you know, we really felt like it was going to be our job to carry the team being the professionals, but as you can see here, Bobby got the first bird clean. After that, things just went downhill, so we're really depending here on our amateurs to step up and carry the pros instead of having it the other way around as you might expect. The few runs we've seen so far, these amateurs do have the advantage of having spent more time with their individual dogs. They don't have to split attentions, so to speak. So when you say you're depending on the amateurs, you, you've got something to actually base that claim on. Oh, no doubt about it. And we've got two guys here on our team who are very experienced amateurs. I mean, Bonnie here is a very young dog of Cade's, but he's been around this game for a long time. He does a very good job with his dog. Cade Gentry from Opelika, Alabama. Been around this game a long, long time. He is designated an amateur here, but that term can be a little bit misleading in this case. He has spent a lot of time training dogs, uh, Bonnie, of course, and, and of course, Jesse before Bonnie. A lot of, a lot of achievements with Jesse. And earlier, David Hamilton at the line had a chance to ask Cade how the training's been going here. With this being her first event, how did you prepare her for what she was going to face here this weekend? Um, I don't now, and I typically have never done a lot of training specifically for this. Um, she has predominantly been just a field trial dog as far as competition, but I'm a duck hunter. And so, you know, in a you know, good year, I may get 30, 35 days in a duck blind. So even though competitively she's just been a field trial dog, 
Um, she has spent a lot of time in blinds and, and boats and things like that. So I was more worried about the, the excitement of it, you know, because she's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty high rolling little dog. She's wound pretty tight and uh, she can, if she gets a little too high, come unglued. Well, taking uh, great dogs like this, hard-charging dogs, keeping them under control is something Cade has picked up through great, great experience. He ran in the Super Retriever Series back in 2004, also 2005, placed third in two of those events in Stuttgart, Arkansas, very memorable events, back-to-back, -back, then won the 2006 Shelbyville, Kentucky Qualifier and placed first in his first amateur event in 2007 with the mother of this dog, and that would, of course, have been Jesse. Phenomenal, strong team. Yeah, and you know, Jesse also was a very wound up dog like her daughter Bonnie here. And just like Jesse, Bonnie is an excellent marking dog. We saw her come back from picking up that wipeout bird, and immediately she looked out there. She knew where that second mark was, went, picked it up clean. We see her on the right hand bird here once again, lined her up, pointed her in the right direction, and Bonnie did her job. She definitely knew where that bird was. Here we go, getting ready for the blind. Back. I think we're going to see Cade here really attack this blind. He knows that he's got a good run under his belt, and he wants to make sure that he doesn't lose it here. And as fast as Bonnie is, it's going to be paramount that he keeps her in the groove right here and really attacks it along the way because you little dog like Bonnie here get to the bank on that right-hand side, and you can watch it go from sugar to, well, something else in a hurry. That's the good and the bad side of having a very fast, agile dog, right? Oh, no doubt about it. Right on track so far. Absolutely nothing out of place. Minimum of handling. Oh, you can see he's keeping her right in the groove, as we said earlier. You know, he's attacking the spline. He's had a few whistles here, but she's responded to every cast, and he's really taken great care to make sure she gets in the slot. And as you can see, it's pretty much all over here. Thing of beauty for Cade Gentry and Bonnie. She picks up the blind. We come home. Look at that. 20, a score of 20. And that, folks, is a perfect score. So that certainly lifts up the prospects of Team Tritronics at this point in the competition. Cade, there's another way to put it other than the fact that you and Bonnie just nailed it out there. How pleased are you with your run in your first series? Um, very, very happy considering her age and that this is her first, uh, you know, her first event. Um, so with her, her youth and um, kind of not knowing what to expect for her to go out there and do a good job, I was really, really pleased. I was, I was hoping just not to get embarrassed, so, so it couldn't have worked out better. Coming up, one of our classics. It's Layla when we return. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 team medley has been brought to you by Drake Waterfowl, innovators in waterfowl hunting. DNT Media, we make market leaders. And powered by Yukonuba. Drake Waterfowl 4x4 team medley competition. We're back from Huntsville, Alabama. Team Yukonuba Sandhill at the line with Jane Doolittle and her dog Layla. Jane is no stranger to this type of competition. Uh, her dog Sam, handled by Richard McDonald, was a 2005 crown champion. Now getting through some tough times as she recently lost Sam and another dog Spur as well. It's it happened so quick with both of them, but they're together and we we just we loved running this SRS. Sam just was a phenomenal dog. <clears throat> this is the first time I've actually been out and running again since they both passed. And it was a good feeling being down there. I feel like um, Sam and Spur were with me. So. And how proud were you, as you said, Sam was a good dog, of Sam's accomplishments winning the 2005 Crown Championship? Oh, that was awesome. I still love to watch the video, watch Sam and Richard together. And uh, Richard uh, helped me a lot with this. Actually got Layla through Richard. Um, he thought she, uh, she and I would be a good fix since Sam was retired. Sa uh, Layla and Sam run a lot alike, very similar personalities. Well, Jane may like watching that old video, but for me it brings back bad memories as Sam and Richard actually beat myself and Achilles to win first place in the finals. Oh, you don't want to talk about the crown championship that got away? <laughs> That's a surprise. That's a shocker. Layla. Well, this dog is a joy to watch, and Sam was too. And 
one of the things that I really like about Layla here is her focus and the way that she and Jane are working together as a team. You can see when she came back, she really indicated, I think, Jane's going after the middle mark here, and she showed us that she knows exactly where that bird is. As a matter of fact, she sighted in on it right now, and about to pick up this bird, I would have, bam, right there it is. Couldn't have popped a chalk line any straighter to that bird. When you watch these marks coming out, did she look solid on each and every one of them, at least at that point, Jay Paul? Yeah, she looked like she really knew what she was doing there on the platform, watched all the birds down. She's kicking her off here on the left-hand mark, which for most of the dogs, this has been the easiest bird. Mm. Now that's a surprise there. After picking up the two right-hand marks clean, really didn't expect to see Layla have to handle here on this bird. However, she's got her in the area, and boom, there she picks it up. That should be counted as a handle in the area, not a handle to the area. So shouldn't have much of an effect on their score. Not a big deduction there. Looking for a perfect score of 20. Of course, that's what each of these teams start with. And, of course, every mistake, every, every fault, every, every mark down takes away from that number. Well, I think we're probably going to see a pretty good score here, but not a 20 for sure. First of all, we had the handle in the area on that left-hand bird, and then we saw her take a poor initial line here on the blind. Nonetheless, she seemed to recover well, and there she's got it. Very nice run for Jane and Layla. Coach Al Arthur, the rest of the team from Team Yukonuba Sandhill, and Jane Doolittle, very, very pleased with the efforts of Layla and the team out there today. So they will come back with 16 points, a good start for Team Yukonuba Sandhill. Let's see how all our teams are stacking up right now. Team Tritronics with the best score so far. Of course, Team Bayer Animal Health and Yukonuba Sandhill in there. Of course, uh, those are not really comparable numbers because each team has run different numbers of flights. But there is so much more of our competition yet to come, and we will have it all for you. When we come back next time, we'll also have something special for you then. Some Super Doc competition from back in town at Huntsville. The Yukonuba Super Doc, the Super V version of that. So you don't want to miss it.